Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello and welcome to lecture 61. So in last lecture we discussed about the performance map showing the dependency in terms of turbine entry temperature and rotational speed. How we have variation of the thrust as well as the thrust specific fuel consumption. We have discussed this in order to understand what we mean by op design condition that is what is say design condition is maximum thrust condition and when we say cruise condition that is what is say lower thrust condition or the thrust requirement for that operation is lower. Then we have discussed about say design and op design condition. We have introduced uh, different parameters for this cycle analysis where we have corrected this parameter we say corrected mass flow rate, corrected temperature ratio corrected speed all those terminologies we have discussed with. We have started with the component matching in terms of inlet and the compressor and we have come up with the point it says based on mass and energy balance the inlet and compressor that is what will be result into two unknowns. One it is say free stream area A infinity and Mach number axial Mach number at the entry of the compressor for any flying Mach number m infinity and we have realized this m infinity that is what will be affecting both as say a infinity as well as the axial Mach number that is what is entering at the face of the compressor. So today we will be discussing about the next component the component that is compressor and combustor matching. So here in this case if we look at my entry area of the compressor is A2, the exit area of the compressor we say is A3 and exit area of the combustion chamber we say is A4. This A4 is nothing but it is the entry area of our turbine and my flow that is what will be entering with Mach number M4 at the entry of our turbine. So, in combustion chamber we are adding certain amount of fuel that is what is represented by M dot F. So under that condition we will be having the out mass flow it is M infinity plus MF. This is what is already known to you. So let us try to write down the mass flow balance at the exit of the burner we can say M4 that is what is given by M3 plus MF that is what we are writing in terms of 1 plus F into m infinity or this m infinity it is nothing but it is m dot 2. So under this condition if we look at we are not having any information about the fuel air ratio. We are also not having information in terms of what is the actual Mach number with which my flow is entering inside the compressor that is what is mz2 we have discussed in last lecture. Now let us try to understand what we mean by this fuel air ratio. Basically this fuel air ratio that is what can be set by throttle. So in conventional language if we consider say our two wheeler or four wheeler you must realize in order to accelerate your vehicle you are doing the throttling. Throttling means you are giving the accelerator or you are pressing the accelerator pedal. What basically it does is it is let the fuel to get inject inside the cylinder for IC engine. In line to that here in order to inject the fuel in combustion chamber we say that process as a throttling process and this throttling process that is what is say we can 
defined in terms of different op design conditions and we say we are having the important control parameter that's what is say T04. This T04 we know it is a fixed number. It says our turbine entry temperature. So you can say by setting the throttle we are able to set our fuel to air ratio. Let's look at how do we resolve the problem here. So mass flow rate at the burner exit that can be represented in terms of pressure P04 and temperature T04 in terms of Mach number M4. So here in this case if we consider most of the time we say my M4 that's what is say the entry condition to the turbine nozzle we are considering that as a say choking condition thermal choking condition where we have maximum amount of flow rate that's what is entering inside the turbine. So under that condition we know we have our burner exit pressure that's what is represented in terms of P03 by P04. We have realized because of the losses happening for say friction that's what will lead to reduce the pressure at the outlet of our combustion chamber. So let's put that in terms of P04. This P04 we can write down in terms of P03 by P02 into P02 by P0 infinity into P infinity. You can realize the meaning here. We say P03 by P02. It is nothing but my compression ratio. P02 by P0 infinity. That's what we say is a total pressure recovery factor. So the outlet pressure that can be represented in terms of say total recovery factor my say pressure ratio in a combustion chamber pressure ratio of my compressor so this is what we can write down here now let's try to understand what we can write down for this equation so if we consider we are having our conservation of the mass we say at the outlet of the combustion chamber my mass balance it is given by 1 plus f into m dot infinity. So here in this case if we write down this is what is a formula in terms of mass flow rate at the exit of our combustion chamber and this is representing our say entry condition of the compressor. So here in this case we can say this is nothing but the corrected mass flow rate of the compressor. So in this if we try to look at this is what is giving very important information. This equation is very much important. So you can say in order to have you know like set of the total or what is the amount of fuel that's what we need to feed with that need to be controlled with some parameter. So what is that control parameter? You can say here in this case this throttling that is nothing but basically it is this temperature ratio and the fuel air ratio that's what can be set in such a way that we will be achieving the compressor pressure ratio as per our requirement. So you can say though our engine it is working under op design condition if we are expecting the same pressure ratio that pressure ratio can be achieved by setting say T04 by T02. And the setting of this T04 by T02 is basically done with the fuel air ratio. Okay. So here in this case if we write down it says if I am simplifying this equation it says I will be having the area ratio. This area ratio is nothing but outlet area of combustion chamber and inlet area of the compressor. So it says this value this is basically remains constant because we are not changing the area of our say turbine nozzle. So here we can say if we have information about say pressure ratio, Mach number, this T02 by T04 by T02 and the fuel air ratio we can calculate what will be the area that's what is at A4 by A2. Now let's try to understand this part in the special language. Here in this case as we have discussed this is nothing but that is representing the corrected mass flow rate. So let's put the plot here. 
here we can say this is nothing but say corrected mass flow rate versus say pressure ratio so if we are putting this these lines basically that's what is representing the compressor line at different speeds we can say this is what is at the maximum speed here this is what is with the minimum speed what is the meaning of that if we consider it says by decreasing the mass flow rate we are able to increase the pressure for all three different speeds so this is what is a characteristic of our compressor so here in this case this line we are representing in terms of n over root theta we can say this is our corrected speed so if we join all these points together that's what is representing the maximum pressure point that is also defined as a stall point or if we are considering say overall engine compressor we can say this as a surge line so those who have done the basic course of aircraft propulsion they are having the idea about what we mean by stall and surge okay so we can say our engine that need to work okay away from this stall line or the surge line suppose this operating line that's what is moving towards the stall line or the surge line it may be possible that whole aircraft engine will go under surge and once it will go under surge it will be catastrophic failure of the engine or overall a failure of the engine it may possible that your aircraft will crash and that's the reason why the operation of this compressor is very important people used to say this compressor as a heart of the engine because if this heart is not working then this engine is of no use okay now let's look at here suppose if i put these lines these lines if we look at these lines they are defined as a total line this total line is basically nothing but it's a temperature ratio this temperature ratio is turbine entry temperature divided by compressor entry temperature so here in this case if we look at this is representing the increasing value of this so this are known as a total line so let's try to look at here somewhere here suppose say if we consider this is what is can be my operating point say point b same way somewhere here i can have my operating point here it's a point a suppose if i consider this point a that's what is say by design condition so for that design condition i say it has been designed for a particular corrected mass flow rate and it is supposed to generate this pressure ratio okay now as we have discussed my engine it is working under of design condition so you can say this is what is with the one total condition suppose if i consider say i want to have say transient towards the deceleration so i want to have the deceleration of the engine then we can say that's what is happening with say movement in this direction from a to b basically what we are doing is we are doing our throttling by throttling what we are doing is we are trying to reduce the turbine entry temperature and this reduction in turbine entry temperature that's what will lead to reduce our rotational speed of the engine when i say my rotational speed of the engine that's what is changing that's what will lead to change the mass flow rate that's what is entering inside the engine as well as the pressure ratio that's what is generated by the engine very careful this is what is very important so just realize if you are looking for say deceleration or the descent of the engine what we need to do is basically we will be moving towards say you know like lower speed range okay similarly suppose if i consider we are somewhere here we want to have the acceleration so what basically we need to do is we are accelerating our flow or we are doing the throttling of the flow and by throttling we are able to increase the pressure ratio of the engine mass to rate of the engine and turbine entry temperature of the engine so this parameter that's what is very important so you know like as we have discussed the operation of this in terms of matching between the say compressor and combustion chamber we have introduced the new control parameter that control parameter we are defining as a 
total line. And as we have seen here, this mass flow rate of the compressor, that's what is playing very important role, both in terms of pressure ratio. Suppose say, if I have the number in terms of or the mass flow rate of the compressor entry, it is known to me. From that, we can calculate what will be the pressure ratio. And in order to achieve that pressure ratio, we can set our total. So it's a vice versa kind of configuration. Okay, now let's look at what is happening in terms of say, even we are moving towards a lower speed configuration where my thrust requirement is not that high. So this point can be shown by point C. Now let's try to understand what we mean by say, of design operation of the multi-stage axial flow compressor. So here in this case, if you look at this magenta line, that's what is representing different speed lines. So here you can say it's a 100% speed. That's what we say is a design condition. So this point, it is a design mass flow rate and design pressure ratio, okay? And the distance between this surge line and the design point, that's what is defined as a surge limit. Here, what all circles we have, what all say shape we have, this line they are representing say constant efficiency line. So here in this case, this efficiency is a compressor efficiency. So, you know, on this, if we will be putting our total line, it will be giving the clear idea how the engine that will be working off. Sometimes we may feel let's move this engine or this compressor at the higher speed. If you are moving towards the higher rotational speed, that also will lead to give this kind of performance. This performance, it says, you know, like it is going completely under the surge condition. So as per the requirement, the pilot will be deciding with the rotational speed of the engine and that rotational speed of the engine, that's what will be adjusted with our total condition or the setting of what amount of fuel we are adding inside the engine. This is what is very important and need to be understood by all of us. Now let's try to understand what we mean by say our energy equation. So this energy equation, that's what is represented in terms of say combustion chamber entry condition M dot 3 H03 plus M dot F Q into NB. That's what is equal to M dot 3 MF H04. And that's what is giving us the fuel air ratio. So if you recall, we were discussing this fuel air ratio. That's what we are setting with our ratio of the temperature T04 by T02. So under this equation, if we look at, we have two unknowns. One unknown, it is what is our H03. And the second, that's what is, what will be the burner efficiency. So, you know, like as we have discussed, once we have information about the mass flow rate, that's what is for the compressor. Based on that, we can set with the pressure ratio. And from that pressure ratio using the total, we can set with our T04, both under design as well as of design condition. Now the question is how to calculate this H03 and this H03, that's what is being set with in terms of what will be the pressure ratio of the compressor because that is nothing but we can say it is P03 by P0T2, it is representing my pressure ratio, okay? So from this equation, if we look at we say we have two unknowns, one it is H03. As we have discussed, this H03 can be adjusted or can be calculated or can be derived with the total line. Now the next unknown parameter, that's what is a burner efficiency. This burner efficiency, if you recall, we have defined, it is actual rate of heat release from the burner to the say ratio of theoretical heat release. When we say theoretical, we are considering, say it's a complete combustion of the fuel. There is no unburned hydrocarbons, no dissociation. That's what is happening. When we are considering, say, actual case, as we have discussed, that will be affected by number of parameters, say, fuel atomization, vaporization, mixing, say, ignition, chemical kinematics, flame stabilization, 
intermediate air, liner cooling. In general, it is depending on number of parameter. So that's what will be giving us the information about say what need to be the burner efficiency. So when we are doing our cycle analysis, what conventionally we are doing is we are assuming our burner efficiency. But when we are talking in terms of, of design condition, this parameter also need to be known to us. Now the question is how to do that calculation. So in order to have that information, here if you look at, there are the standard chart available in open literature. It says, you know, we will be calculating this combustion factor. This combustion factor, that's what will be giving us the, say, combustion efficiency. So it says it can be calculated from the chart. We need to select what is the value of this parameter and what is the value of this parameter B. This B parameter, that's what is a function of fuel air ratio. And this fuel air ratio, if you recall, that's what is depending on what is the proportion, say it says stoichiometric ratio, lean burning, say rich burning, all this information, that's what is known to us. So very first thing is you can calculate your burner efficiency based on this chart or else you need to go with say assume and trial and error approach. So here in this case, if I want to have the information about this value of fuel air ratio, we have discussed, we have our control parameter, that's what is total line. So how do we use this? So let's divide this equation with H02. You can realize the purpose why we are dividing this with H02. So when we are dividing this with H02, it says like this function, this equation, it is given in terms of T04 by T02. Okay. And this is what is representing the temperature ratio, that's what is T03 by T02, okay. So here in this case, we can say we are able to calculate what will be our burner efficiency and what will be our the stagnation enthalpy or the temperature at the entry of the combustor, okay. Now let's move towards the next component what we have. We have next component, it is combustor and the turbine. So let's discuss about the component matching between say combustor and the turbine. So here in this case, as we have assumed, say we have our chalk configuration for the turbine nozzle. We can have the cooling, the hot spots at the turbine entry. There may be losses in the turbine efficiency because of the cooling. So we can have two kind of configuration which are possible for the turbine. Very first, it is uncool configuration. Second, that's what is with the cool configuration. So let's try to understand what we mean by cool configuration. So many times it says some amount of air that's what is being taken from the intermediate stage for the cooling purpose. That's what it says epsilon 1 into m infinity. Then the remaining amount of air that's what is going in the later stage of the compressor, it is 1 minus absolute into say M infinity, say high pressure air, high temperature air, that's what is coming out from the HP compressor, that's what will be injected at the HP turbine for the cooling purpose, that's what we are writing in terms of epsilon 2. So in overall, if we look at, at the exit, we will be having our mass flow rate, it says M infinity into say MF. Okay. Here in this case, epsilon 1 and epsilon 2, that's what is representing the air cooling mass flow rate. That's what we are taking out from the compressor stage. So let's try to analyze this part. So we can write down as we have discussed, we are writing the performance assessment of this component in terms of corrected mass flow rate. So let's write down the corrected mass flow rate equation at the entry and exit of the turbine. So here it is given by m dot 4 square root of theta 4 by delta 4. Similarly, at the outlet, it is m dot 5 theta 5 by delta 5. Now, this we can write down in terms of temperature ratio as well as pressure ratio. So we can write down if we have our cool kind of configuration, then m dot 4 and m dot 5, that's what is in terms of epsilon and epsilon 1 and epsilon 2. 
Suppose if you are taking the ratio of these two parameters, say corrected mass flow rate at the entry and exit of the turbine, that is what can be written in this formula. So, here in this case if we look at this is representing the expansion ratio of the turbine and in denominator this is representing the temperature. Now, this temperature ratio that is what is given by T05 by T04. This T05 that is what is very important because if I consider say cool condition and uncool condition the value of this T05 that is what will be different. Okay. So, accordingly it will be changing what will be the temperature ratio for the cool configuration and uncool configuration. It says for the cool configuration this temperature ratio that is what will be lower and that is what will lead to give say the expansion ratio or the ratio of P05 by P0, P04 by P05 to be say lower for cool configuration and this ratio that is what is higher for uncool kind of configuration. So, let us look at what we mean here the purpose for the turbine it is for the generation of the power. So, let us try to write down the equation energy equation. So, this energy equation we can say this compressor work that can be represented in terms of m dot infinity h03 minus h02. This is what can be written in terms of turbine work that is what is m dot infinity plus mf h04 minus h05. This we can write down in terms of Cp delta T0. This is what is known to you we have done for almost all cycles. Suppose if we will try to simplify this equation it says my temperature ratio that is what is in terms of say for compressor and turbine. So, for compressor we can write down it is T03 by T02 and for turbine it will be T05 by say T04. Okay. So, if we look at this ratio that is what is remains almost constant over the wide range of operation because I need to have this turbine to generate sufficient amount of work in order to achieve the desired pressure ratio from the compressor. Okay. So, under that condition we can say we can rewrite this equation in terms of T04 by T02. So, if we say T04 by T02 again that is what we say is a total control or total line. So, here in this case if we will try to write down the equation it says this is nothing but it is say my temperature ratio minus 1 that is what is varying with say my temperature ratio T04 by T02 under off design condition. So, basically the total condition that is what is managing the temperature ratio of the compressor or we can say that is what is managing the pressure ratio of the compressor. We have discussed this point earlier. Now, here in this case if we consider this is what is say efficiency mechanical efficiency into 1 plus f we can say this to be variation is very small for both design and off design condition. So, based on that it says my temperature ratio for the compressor say that is what is under design condition and off design condition this OD suffix that is what is representing the off design condition and D that is what is representing my design condition. So, you can say that is what is basically depending on our total line control. Okay. So, let us try to write down this equation in terms of pressure ratio. Fundamentally, we know this temperature ratio of the compressor can be written in terms of say pressure ratio. So, if we will simplify it says the equation under off design condition for the compressor that is what is coming like this. Okay. So, it says like compressor and turbine performance map that is what is always we are writing in terms of corrected mass flow rate and the corrected speed. So, we can express the same in uh, of design condition also. So, let us write down the corrected compressor speed as say n over square root of theta 2. Same way for the turbine we can write down n over theta 4 and it says if we are comparing this two, it says my say 
corrected speed of the compressor that's what is corrected speed of the turbine into square root of t04 by t02 it says the typical range for the turbo shaft engine it is in terms of 13000 to 15000 rpm for the military engine they are on the higher side say 15000 to 18000 rpm say transport aircraft if we consider this speed will be in the range of 10000 rpm or maybe less than this okay so let's write to write down the equation of the compressor work so this is what is based on our thermodynamic correlation if we are writing the work done in the say aerodynamic firm then based on the eulers equation as we have discussed in week 2 it says my compressor work that's what is proportional to the square of rotational speed so if that's the case we can write down my temperature ratio that's what is direct directly proportional to my corrected speed of the compressor and we know from earlier correlation it says my corrected speed of the compressor it is corrected speed of the turbine into square root of t04 by t02 if we consider say t05 by t04 that's what i say constant so meaning here this is constant is in terms of my work developed by the turbine if that's the case we can say our say critical speed of the turbine that's what will be constant so it says my corrected speed of the compressor it is in direct proportion of say t04 by t02 so it says like under op design condition if you are looking for say corrected speed of the compressor that can straight we be calculated based on this temperature ratio or total settings this is what all we have discussed in our last discussion when we are discussing about the performance map of the compressor so now let's try to understand here say when we are talking about say corrected mass flow rate for the compressor that's what is written in terms of m dot 2 square root of theta 2 by delta 2 and corrected mass flow rate for the turbine it is written in terms of m dot 4 square root of theta 4 divided by delta 4 we know the number what we are putting that's what is also in terms of mass flow rate this mass flow rate it is coming for the turbine it is in a fraction of 1 plus f okay so we cannot neglect that term at this moment so if you are considering that as a case it says my corrected mass flow rate of the compressor that's what is a function of corrected mass flow rate into say our ratio of pressure p04 by p02 divided by 1 plus f and square root of t04 by t02 now let's try to understand what is the meaning of this so this is what is uh, representing our compressor map and on that compressor map we have discussed about the total setting on the other side if you look at this is a representation of the turbine map be careful here on x axis this is represented in terms of mass flow rate corrected mass flow rate into corrected speed and this is representing 1 over say pressure ratio or we can say it's expansion ratio so what we have consider is you know this line that's what is representing the operating line this operating line is a constant operating line the reason we have discuss about here in this case this lines they are representing say different speed lines okay and this contours they are representing say constant efficiency contour so now the situation is what need to be the speed of the turbine because if we are going with the higher rotational speed we will be having higher stress we will be having the issue in terms of structure so you know like this is little confusing in terms of understanding the performance map of the turbine so conventionally people they are plotting the turbine operating map in this way so here if you look at it is representing the pressure ratio p04 by p05 and this is representing the say uh, our corrected mass flow rate for the turbine so under this condition if you look at these lines they are representing our corrected speed lines both in efficiency 
as well as for the corrected mass flow rate configuration. So if we look at carefully, it says for different speed conditions, different corrected speed condition, these all lines, they are merging at one point. And then we are having the mass flow rate, that's what is constant. It says this number to be one. This is nothing but that's what is representing the thermal choking condition, what all we were discussing in terms of say entry of the turbine. So somewhere here, we will say we will be having say design point where we have our maximum efficiency of the turbine. So this design point we can say for the particular pressure ratio, we will be having this point it is lying somewhere here. Now when we are discussing about the cruise condition, even under cruise condition also, we will be having this efficiency to be slightly lower compared to our design condition and you know like the nozzle turbine nozzle that may be chalk or nearly about chalk condition that's what will be happening for the cruise condition so this is what is very important in terms of understanding what we mean by the matching between turbine and the compressor and we have realized now how we are controlling the parameter in terms of pressure ratio how we are controlling the parameter in terms of mass flow rate using the total line and how do we decide with the turbine operating condition both under cruise as well as design condition. So here we are stopping with our discussion. In next lecture we will be discussing how do we use this information in order to do the calculation for what all we have discussed about the pressure ratio what all we have discussed in terms of mass flow rate calculation. We also will be discussing our later component. That's what is matching between turbine and the nozzle. So stay connected. Thank you. Thank you very much.